Okay, for section 3.3, this is the volume of prisms and cylinders. So I'll go over cylinders first and then look at prisms at the end because they're a little bit easier. Um, typically, when you're looking at volume of any type of shape, usually it's the area of the base times the height. So in this case, I need to calculate the volume and capacity of a cylinder with a diameter of 15 centimeters and a height of 36 centimeters. These are key. You have to make sure they're in the same units. You have to make sure they're in the same units. If they're not, then you kind of have to get them in the same units um, and you have a bit of work to do before that happens. So here's my cylinder. Um, it has a diameter of 15 centimeters. So diameter, remember, goes straight across and that's a distance of 15. And it has a height, which is all the way from the top to the bottom, of 36 uh, centimeters. And they're both in the same units, which is good. Now, you have to use your data pages for this whole section. Um, very important that you use them, you study them, you have them handy. You get these on the provincial exam, so you don't need to memorize any of these formulas. Formulae, sorry. Uh, geomet geometric figures for cylinder, you can see here right at the top, uh, we have surface area and volume. The volume, like I said, is the area of the base times the height. So there's nothing really to memorize, it's pretty, pretty easy. So the area of, a, of the base is the area of a circle, because the, the base is a circle. If, you, if you're unsure of that, you can just go up to a circle and look at the area. Oh, right, that's pi r squared. So my area of the circle is pi times radius squared. Now, you're not given the radius, you're given the diameter. So the radius is actually equal to one half the diameter which is equal to 7.5 centimeters. Okay, so the radius is a half of the diameter, which is 7.5 centimeters, because 7.5 is half of 15. So when I'm working out the formula for this, I'm gonna have the area is equal to pi times 7.5 squared. Order of operations, remember you have to do the r squared, the exponent, first. So whatever calculator you have, you should have a squared button on it with an X with a little two above it. So you have 7.5 squared. And then I have to multiply that by pi. Always use your pi button. Don't use 3.14. Don't round. If you have a pi button, use it. And most calculators, almost every calculator does now. So I multiply it by pi. I get 176.71. I'll round it to the second decimal place. So there's 176.71. And actually, I don't really have to round because what I can do right away is multiply that value to get my volume, right? Because volume is going to be equal to my area of my base, which is 176.71 times the height, which is 36, and that will get me my volume. Remember that area is going to be centimeters squared. The units are going to be squared. Volume is going to be centimeters cubed. So again, I take my calculator, I take the value that I just had, don't even delete it because it's all there, and then multiply it by 36. So I get 6,361.73. 6,361.73 centimeters cubed. And there's the volume of that cylinder. So make sure you understand that the units have to be the same. If they aren't, you have to convert them to the same units. And you have to make sure that you have the right proper measurements. So here I, I needed radius, I had diameter, so divided by two. <clears throat> the next one we could go through gives you a picture. It gives you three different, uh, three different cylinders and wants you to find the volume of each one. Each one has a height of 20. So let's just do one here, just so we remember how to do this. So it says 10, well that's the distance right across. So I know that the radius for this one is going to be equal to 5 because the radius is half and that's given me, uh, giving me the diameter. So the volume is going to be equal to, again, pi r squared times h. So the volume is equal to pi times 5 squared times 20. And I can do this all on my calculator. Uh, you don't have to do this by hand. So 5 squared I would do first, then times it by pi, then I would times it by my height, which is 20. So I get 1570.8, 1570.8. And that would be in centimeters cubed again. 
And you could go ahead and find the volume of each one and then just add them all together. So we'd calculate the volume and capacity of the stacked cylinders, so you want them all together. Um, I'm just going to do one because the rest of them are exactly the same. It's just you have to note that the radius for this one is going to be 10, and the radius for this one is going to be 20. So do you remember to cut the, cut the diameter in half. All right, last question on this page for cylinders. A large tin can, so you have to know that a tin can is a cylinder and not like a box or a cube or something. So you must know that a can is a cylinder, if you know this question, and has a capacity of 3.24 liters. 3.24 liters. Um, if you're unsure of the conversion from centimeters to liters, uh, something good that you can do is you can actually go right online and you can convert liters to centimeters cube, which is what we want. So if I look here, I already see that one liter is equal to a thousand cubic centimeters for one liter, for one liter. So if I go back to my question, here I have 3.24 liters. So 3.24 liters, I know already that one liter is equal to 1,000 centimeters cubed, right? So the conversion factor is 1,000 for every one liter. So I just multiply this by 1,000 or move the decimal place 1, 2, 3, put a zero, to actually get 3,240 centimeters cubed. I'm totally fine with you guys using a conversion, um, online conversion, for, even for tests, if you have to convert something uh, like liters to centimeters cubed or something like that that's un, that you're unsure of, don't be afraid to use online conversions. It's very easy just to Google it um, and it's, it's right there for you. So here I have the conversion. There's my volume. That is actually my volume. Now, the can has a diameter Remember, diameter, we need radius of 15.56. So I could take 15.56 and divide it by 2 for my radius, which is 7.78. Good. Now I have all the pieces. What is the height of the can? So this time, my formula, volume equals pi r squared times h, so the area of the base times the height. I don't have the height this time. I'm going to be solving for height but I have the volume. So I plug this value in, this 3,240, into my V for volume. So I replace that with 3,240 is equal to pi times 7.78 squared times h. Now you might have to remember a little bit of algebra um, in order to solve for h. What you basically want to do is you want to divide by this stuff here is pi times 7.78 squared, which we'll figure out what it is. So I have 7.78 squared times pi, and you can round a bit, 190.16. So that's 190.16. So let's write that out. So I have 3,240 equals, I have a bad memory, 190.16, 190.16, wow. 190.16 times h. Now, in order to solve for h, because this is multiplied, I do the opposite operation. To get rid of it, I have to divide, not subtract, divide. So I divide both sides by 190.16, 190.16. So I take 3,240 divided by 190.16, which is equal to 17.04. Which is equal to my height. And I'm done, because that's what it wanted. It wanted what is the height of the can. So typically when they give you when they ask for a dimension like the height or the width or the diameter or what is this, they will give you the capacity or the volume, and you have to use that volume in your equation. So typically you're used to taking the volume, figuring out what it is by taking pi r squared times the height. But sometimes they will give you the volume or they'll give you the surface area and you have to plug that value in and do a little bit of algebra by dividing. So hopefully that makes sense. The next two examples I want to do are just prisms. These shouldn't take too long. So the, the uh, idea is the same for prisms. The volume is the area of the base times the height. That's all. Now the base you can kind of um, see is actually the front, usually typically it's the front face, 
It's the easiest thing to think of, of of the base. And then the height is extended back. You could even draw this thing. I mean, you could draw it on its side going up like that um, if you wanted to, right? And then kind of think about it that way as being the height. Um, but typically, they could be drawn like this as well. So either way, but this is going to be your height. The distance, the long distance typically is the height. So that will help you. The area of the base, in this case, the base is just a rectangle. It's a six by four rectangle. So the volume of the area of the base is just six times four, and then the height is just nine. And you should know that any any kind of cubic figure like this, any kind of um, like a with a quadrilateral base, like a rectangle or a square, is just all the all the values multiplied base times width times height. But if you keep in mind that just area of base times height pretty much works for every figure for volume. Um, except for the bottom one. We'll see that in a second. So the volume is actually equal to 6 times 4, 6 times 4 times 9, which is 216. And I should have put units on this. We'll say it's centimeters. So that'll be centimeters cubed. Okay, so just base times width, area of the base times the height, or length times width times height. Now number two, uh, you could do a couple ways. The first way I'm going to show you is um, the area of the base times the height way. So the area of the base is a triangle in this case. So you have to remember that a triangle is equal to one half the base times the height of the triangle. That's the area of a triangle. So that would be one half times, the base is five times seven. So I have five times seven times a half, or whatever, divided by two, uh, is 17.5. So I have the area of the base now, and I have the height. It's very simple. I just have 17.5, which was the area of the base, which is a triangle, times the height, which is 11. So I have 17.5 times 11, which is 192.5. Actually, I'll keep it simple. I'll leave it that way. So as long as you have the height of the triangle, the height of the triangle, which you need to have the to figure out what the volume is, because uh, you need to find out the base area, which is a triangle. So you have to have the height. You take the height times the base divided by two for the triangle area, and then times that by the height of the entire, uh, what's this called, the triangular prism, because the base is a triangle. Triangular prism kind of looks like a tent. And then your final answer, again, these should have units on them. We'll say centimeters cubed. So there's prisms and you have cylinders above. Hopefully that makes sense. If it doesn't, go back, watch through the video and let me know if you have any questions.